So I had a unique challenge for attaching the bar joists to the posts and finding some good way of doing that. I had originally considered doing some sort of a clip that would go up over the, the bar joists over the top here and then come down the pole and then I'd run a, a big like half inch bolt, a carriage bolt or something like that through it. And that would help with my, my uplift for the wind. Um, but then I had an issue where I'd have a space here to take up uh, and that wouldn't keep this, the bar joist, it wouldn't keep it from moving on the pole this way. It also didn't do anything for fixing the movement going this way. So I kind of went back to the, the drawing board. I slept on it, <laughs> thought about it. And um, this is kind of what I settled on. Uh, this is version 2.0, uh, but this is kind of how I think I'm gonna do the other three. So I put a, a two by blocking that's screwed with fine thread screws into the bar joist, into that bottom flange of the bar joist. Then I have a blocking here that screws into the post, and that gives me a surface to screw the plywood to. I use the structural plywood as kind of a big, I guess, clip or something you'd think of uh, to help it from, from being able to rack and tie the top block in with the bottom block. So here's our 2x6. 2x6 is screwed with four screws to each side of the bar joist, the bottom cord of the bar joist. And then that comes over, attaches to the pole, and the block, and the plywood. And then the top one attaches to the plywood and the block. So let's look at the other side. So here's the other side. Uh, there's the, the plywood is screwed. It's fastened here with uh, Simpson structural screws, the three inch structural screws uh, going into the, the two by six that's on the bottom. Then I use the structural sheathing. This is some of the scraps we have left over from doing the house. And that's screwed up here with the structural screws as well to our block that's fastened to our steel, our bar joist. Then this gives me a screw point coming down here is hitting the edge of the block that's uh, screwed with five inch lag screws into the pole. Then I also screwed in, these are the five inch lag bolts. And these are just intermediates with the structural screws and then another one of the five inch lag bolts up at the top. So that helps, this plywood has a great uh, property to it and that it now it's helped this from wanting to be able to rack side to side um, And then having it screwed off at the bottom here and having this block took care of the movement of the plywood where it would want to flex Around the pole because the pole was round I really only had one fastening point on the pole and that piece of plywood would want to be able to move this way as it rotated around that pole so by putting the extra block in now we gave it a second point to screw to, and I think this is a pretty good system for ha handling all the different, I guess, reactionary loads or all the different ways or to kind of brace this whole system off and take care of the, the, the uplift. So I'm holding the, the bar joist down with the connections. I'm helping it from wanting to rack this way with the building, and I've held the joist in place uh, pretty well from wanting to move on the pole moving this way. Our joists and joist clips do a pretty good job of keeping the pole from wanting to move this way. So all that's kind of tied in. We'll have a few more things to put in that'll help with that, but I feel like we've got a pretty good connection point for being able to put our wind rod bracing in uh, with those clips and not be pulling on this bar joist and essentially trying to pull it off of the top of the pole. So in addition to those, these five inch lags that I ran in temporary as I assembled everything, now we've got this whole system here that's gonna help hold the bar joist in place and fasten it to our telephone pole. So I've got three more of these to do. Let's get to it.
So we've got a final run on our, we're running all of our lights out here. We're using a three bulb uh, fixture. It's got an aluminum lens to it. Might seem like an odd choice, but they were free. Uh, my dad does commercial interior renovations. These were destined for a dumpster. Uh, the only catch is they come with a ballast set for 277. So I have to switch out that ballast uh, with a more residential ballast. So we go with a electronic ballast. Uh, I think it is. Don't quote me on that because I am no electrician. But I pick up these ballasts and they, they uh, convert that over to the three bulbs um, and uh, except uh, 120 bases are residential service. So uh, the bulbs that I... Oh, also the other thing is that most of these had T12s in them and we're switching them over to a T8 bulb. So these will be a 1 inch T8 32 watt bulb uh, in these and I have six of these fixtures. So this is our final run. Uh, I've got to feed a wire uh, in and down into a light switch. Got this last run. I'm going to try to do it without a fish tape or anything or pull string or anything like that. I think I can get it go. I didn't glue any of the fittings, so if I really had to, I could pop those apart, turn a corner, and go down. I got two 90s in this to go to go 190 heads. <coughs> Excuse me, 190 heads that way, and then 190 heads down, and that should pop us out in the box. So hopefully it'll it'll feed. We're about to find out. So I've just got it temporarily wired up. I haven't really gotten into putting all the switches in the box. But I uh, really wouldn't mind checking it all out, testing it uh, before I get too far along. Got our extension cord, and we got our plug end. Let's see what happens. How about that? Pretty good. So we got we got lights out here now. So the way they do a commercial lamp is uh, they run one ballast controls one lamp, and one ballast runs two uh, lamps in the fixtures in a three fixture, a three light fixture. And so we switch these out. Uh, they also these are running two seventy seven. So I switch these out for a T eight. Uh, more residential ballast. So we take all these out of the old fixtures and switch them out for a ballast like this. And so it's a three lamp. Um, it's 120 uh, or 277 technically, but we're using the 120 part. And it uh, switches it out to be compatible with T8 bulbs. So there are the one inch T8 32 watt bulbs. So we switched out all those ballasts and all the fixtures. Our, our receptacle and our switch, it's about four feet off the ground, so I'm not really worried about it getting wet too much. I mean, it could blow some rain in there. So just to be, I guess, on the safe side, I got this weather-resistant cover. So this should help keep the water out of it. And I also bought weather-resistant plugs. Uh, so we'll see if those help us. So this encases the switch, and you can use this toggle to switch the, the switch on and off. And then there's a door for this receptacle inside. I think that will work for cutting logs. <laughs>